Good, good evening, everybody. Welcome to our midweek service. Uh, tonight, uh, before we proceed, we will worship the Lord with one song. And I recommend everybody to be in the spirit of worship as we sing this song to the Lord.
praise and worship you, O oh Lord, despite the fact that we are not congregating, O oh Father God, in one place, hallelujah, but when we are in one spirit, O oh God, hallelujah, the Bible says two or three gather together in your name, you're in the midst of us, you're in the midst of us in this place, in our barracks, in our homes, even in our cars tonight, O oh Father God, as we are listening to our midweek service and watching oh god yes i pray that you will continually move oh lord hallelujah beyond the internet oh god yes jesus. and i pray oh father god in the name of jesus that you will speak to us oh lord yes, especially in this difficult time of oh father god during our uh quarantine oh lord hallelujah and we pray oh father god that you will speak to us and we will apply it in our lives anointing to the preaching and hearing of your words oh lord and help us oh father god in the end of this uh a service tonight we will have a prayer for for healing and protection and this we give you glory in jesus name amen amen if you that, clap your hands to the lord hallelujah 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 praise hallelujah god. amen praise the lord uh before before i begin let's start with the word of god tonight 
and let us open our Bibles in Deuteronomy chapter 8 verse 2 3 let's start with 1 Deuteronomy 8 chapter 8 verse 1 2 3 16 17 and 18 Okay, the Bible says, All the commandments which I command thee this day shall you observe to do, that you may live and multiply, and go in and possess the land which the Lord swear unto your fathers. Two, and thou shalt remember all the way which the Lord Thy God led thee these forty years in the wilderness to humble thee and to prove thee to know that was in thine heart whether thou wouldest keep his commandments or no. Verse 3 And he humbled thee and suffered thee to hunger and feed thee with manna which thou knowest not neither did thy fathers know that he might make thee know that man doth not live by bread only but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of the Lord doth man live and let's jump to 16 17 and 18 of the same chapter of the Deuteronomy 8 who fed thee in the wilderness with manna which thy fathers knew not that he might humble thee, and that he might prove thee to do thee good at thy latter end. And thou, thou say in thine heart, My power and the might of mine hand has gotten me this wealth. 18 says, But thou shalt remember the Lord thy God, for it is he that giveth power to get wealth that he may establish his covenant, which is where unto thy fathers, as it is this day. Amen. Praise the Lord. And that is the word of the Lord for tonight. So we're here tonight once again for our midweek online service. And I believe in my lifetime, this is the first time that everybody is facing the same challenge, the same difficulty, the same situation, the same circumstances. We are all living under the threat of this virus called COVID-19. It has been probably the only topic that people are talking about or related to COVID-19. As you all know, this started probably, if I'm not mistaken, November or December of 2019. But the moment we went from December to January, a lot of things has, ha has happened. If you look at January 1, until the end of that month, every day there was something going on. Even today, if I'm not mistaken, you can look it up. There was a big earthquake in Russia, 7.8 in magnitude. There are a lot of things that is happening, but it is being covered by this news, COVID-19. With respect to that, you have to understand that COVID-19 was discovered November, December, you can look it up. And when we entered January, there were a lot of headlines that was covering this virus. And when Kobe Bryant died, then our Facebook, our Twitter, everything, all the news, it was all covered of the death, of the untimely demise of a 
basketball legend Kobe Bryant that it seems the world has forgotten about COVID-19. And now COVID-19 is taking the headlines and we don't know that there are also a lot of things happening uh, behind the scenes or behind this circumstance or challenge. Now there is a peace talk between Israel and Palestinian and Palestine. And there will be a uh, maybe a peace agreement between these two. And this is a fulfillment of the prophecy in Revelations. And I would like you to go to Pastor Irvin Baxter's Facebook page, update yourself. Our midweek service before we had quarantine was where we were looking at the video series of Pastor Irvin Baxter about the end, understanding the end time. And this could have been our third session tonight. And I believe we need to continue despite this quarantine so that we will be we will not be ignorant about the end time. And we are so close and it, it feels like we're even in a movie, that it, this is all happening. And so that's why tonight the message would be probably why this test, why are we having all of us all over the world is having all this uh, circumstance and this challenge that even in the remote island nation of Palau we are affected because we have never experienced war here we have never experienced extreme storms or even flooding uh, we have not experienced any of that here we have been so blessed we have been so protected COVID-19 we were not spared all of us all over the world it doesn't matter where you are or where you're from all of us are affected with this challenge Amen. that's why we have to ask the question why why now and why we are having tests you know tests brings difficulties it brings pressure and I believe nobody wants tests. When we were students, when we were in the primary, secondary, or tertiary, or even our masteral, I believe nobody really liked tests because it means difficulty, pressure, and probably you get stressed out. Amen. And that's why we have to ask, why is it happening to us? We even even ask why why bad things happen to very very good people and why we have exerted so much effort sometimes we have very poor poor results so we have to ask why we are struggling and we don't understand or we don't know when this is going to end right. and we wonder why Let me just be honest, you know, people tend to deal with tests or difficulties better if they understand what they endure serves a purpose. You know, like an athlete, he understands why he has to go through difficulty in training because it serves a purpose that he becomes better at his craft. And Senator Manny Pacquiao says it best. Train hard, the fight is easy. Why? Because you have been through the difficulty of training. And that's why he endures it because it serves a purpose. But the question is this, what is COVID-19's purpose? That's why many people don't want to be quarantined they don't want to stay at home because they feel like there is no purpose. We are losing our income. We don't want to work. 
What's the purpose of COVID-19? That's why many people cannot understand why they have to stay at home. They don't see it. They don't see the purpose. If they can just only see the purpose of this challenge, I believe all of us would not have any difficulty following the guidelines of our government and our government officials because they are doing their best to prevent this COVID-19 from what's the right word from spreading and a lot of doctors are saying if you don't believe it's bad it is bad if you don't believe it's serious, it is serious. Knowing that the trials of our faith are not pointless, then it makes it easier for us to endure. Why? Because there is a purpose to endure. Our family is in quarantine, is in lockdown, because it serves a purpose to protect our families and loved ones. If this lockdown does not serve any purpose, even me, I won't even do it. But it serves a purpose to protect us. This test, worldwide test, we have to go back to the Word of God in Romans 8.28. That we know that all things work together for good. It doesn't matter how bad it seems, but I truly believe that there is something good that can come out of COVID-19. And I believe you have seen it in Facebook already, that there are many things that come out good of COVID-19. For those who wanted days off, now you have many days off. For those who are complaining, I'm too tired of working. Now is the time to rest. But please be careful. Just please don't eat and sleep, okay? You, praise God, hope, hopefully when COVID-19 will pass, hopefully we will not any have problems with our weight and hypertension. It doesn't mean that we are at home, we cannot do anything. And I thank God with our kids today, for the first time probably in their life, both of them wrote one sentence 100 times the quick jumps over a lazy dog because believe it or not my kids has the best handwriting in the world and they need to practice more so praise god and i thank god sister dina and we are planning and we're gonna do it that while we are awake that the kids will be praying hourly. Amen. And that is something that we can do. Spend time more with the Lord. Not Netflix. Not Disney Plus. Not YouTube. Okay. Let's take time to look at our spouses and our kids. This is now the time talk with God. Amen. The purpose of every test is this, to reveal what we understand. Okay? The purpose of test, to reveal what we understand. Go back to our exams in our college days or elementary days. You can see your classmate who truly understands the subject because the way he answers the test, the way he is so focused. But if you don't know the test, it reveals what you don't understand because you started to drift and you start to look for your classmate for answers. And you, your neck will become longer than usual and you start to kick the chairs or tables of your classmates because tests reveal what we understand and it reveals what we don't understand. 
Praise God. You can apply that in any tests. Spiritual test, financial test, COVID-19, quarantine. It will reveal what we understand. Because if you understand COVID-19, you will not fight the government. Because you have to understand, according to the doctors, that you will not show symptoms for 14 days, 21 days, or even 30 days, they say. So you can look healthy, but you already have COVID-19. That's why it is important, essential to lock down, to isolate, to make sure we don't have it so don't, we don't pass it. If you understand that, you don't fight. He says, I believe that, so I have to protect myself and my loved ones, even though they don't have, and there are many people who the doctors call asymptomatic. They don't show any symptoms or signs that they are sick, but they have the virus. And they have the capability of spreading it to you and me. That's why isolate. If you understand that, you won't fight. You would stay put, stay home. But many people just reveals what they don't understand. That's why they continue to go out. See, this is just COVID-19. How about spiritual test? How about pride test? It reveals what we don't understand and it reveals what we understand. So why do we need tests? We know the purpose, right? To reveal what we understand and to reveal what we don't understand. Whatever problem you're facing right now, I hope you understand why you're going through it. That's why one pastor told me, always spiritualize what's happening. Amen. Always spiritualize what's happening. You have to see beyond the problem, the test. There is a spiritual significance. There is a spiritual lesson that needs to be learned and needs to be applied. Spiritualize it. Why people hate you, why people misunderstand you. Why we are, why you are sick right now, even though you're faithful. So we must spiritualize it. Lord, what are you trying to tell me? What are you trying to say to me? What are you trying to... Teach me. Praise God. So, why tests? The Bible said it, Deuteronomy said it, it is to humble us. To make us humble. That it is not by our might and not by our power, not by our intellect, that we have the capacity to earn. Look at now all over the world. Number one economy in the world, second, third economies in the world, all shut down because of one virus. I never thought that a virus could ever do this to the world. I thought it's going to be war. I thought it's going to be nuclear bomb. I thought it's going to be hydrogen bomb. I thought it's going to be uh, chemical warfare. I thought it was going to be economic sabotage, but virus. Novel Coronavirus, COVID-19. This test is to humble us. This test also will prove our character. And I've seen in YouTube videos of people that are fighting over rolls and rolls of toilet paper. Oh my goodness, I was like, I could not imagine it. That one person was begging, can I just have one pack? of toilet paper. He was begging for a toilet paper. Toilet paper. If it was me, I don't care about toilet paper. Bring me my rice. Where are the sacks of rice? Praise God. We all, all have different priorities. 
First world problem, we need toilet paper. Third world problem, that's not a problem. There's a lot of alternatives. <laughs> Praise God. It proves, just this test will prove our character. Are we going to be a good person? Are we going to be selfless or selfish? Our character will be tested and we will show it through this hard times. The Bible teaches us, the Word of God says, it teaches us that we need more than bread. We need the Word of God right now. We don't need TikTok. I thank God there are no saints here in Palau that I think you can spend more productive time than doing that. Well, if you want to do that, praise God. How about, why won't you dust off the cobwebs of the Word of God? I believe God is telling us, you still have no time for me? It teaches us that our work, our business, God is saying to Deuteronomy that it is not by our own strength that we are that we are made to prosper. The test happens so that we would not forget God. And this is what's happening around the world. We should not forget that there is someone who is in control. So that we would learn quarantine because I believe our number one economy is tourism. And most of our businesses here is in support of that economy. SME, small or medium businesses are really affected, like restaurants, whatever. All of us are affected, especially the diving industry in Palau. Hotels, everybody will be affected. And I hope and pray that it will not affect us for that long. But what God is teaching us that we should learn to trust Him. Faith during this time should grow stronger and not weaker. And I thank God for this online service. And I give God the glory because we have reached out to brothers and sisters that were once here in Palau, but now are abroad. And they sent us comments and saying, Pastor, thank God that we have online service that they can go to church and or they can go hear the Word of God. And this is another platform, an opportunity to spread the Word of God. And that's because of this test. And we have reached farther than ever before. I couldn't believe the views. I thought there will only be 60 views, 70 views. But it reached farther than that. And I give God the glory for that. And that is because of this challenge and this test. That we should not be limited in the four corners of any building. But we could minister those who are around us. And all of us are close because of that. And this is how God tests us. We answered why. We know the purpose of the test. And now we have to answer how God tests us. He allows us to lack. Lack. I talked to one pastor, he comes from the United States of America, he's an American pastor. And I told him in one of our sharing, he says that 
because there was one pastor who commented that how come that the Spirit of God or revival or the move of God or miracle of science and wonders happen in third world countries. And I told him, this pastor, this brother, I told him, because we don't have a choice, because we don't have another option, only God. We don't have the resources, we don't have the money, we don't have the technology, we don't have the medical technology or the advancement that we could acquire immediately. We can only turn to God. And so I, I told this to one American pastor, and he says, that's true, but there's also, but here's the thing about God, that even though you have a lot, but He will give you something that you will still need Him, despite you have a lot compared to other people. That He would give you a need to trust Him, to rely on Him, not rely on money and faith. There are many people who have a lot of money. They can probably make technology, but they could not heal themselves. Thank God, here in Palau, we have experienced numerous miracles of brothers and sisters having no money, but only have faith in God. And I thank God for those miracles. And I would like to clap my hands to that, the miracle signs and wonders with God. And I hope you clap with me tonight. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. So that we will not forget God and we have to trust God and grow stronger. And God allows us to lack because He will supply our needs in a manner in which we are not familiar. Probably many of in the world people are praying, Lord, I don't have time for you. Lord, please give me time. And God says, now you have time. Praise God. Lord, before I don't have energy to pray. Now you have a lot of energy to pray. Because you are in lockdown. Praise God. He allows us to be dependent on Him. Because we are so independent from the Lord. He allows us to suffer pain. And if you don't agree with me, Please look for our message a few Sundays ago. Pain is a gift. And you'll understand that pain is necessary. God is more interested in our character than in our comfort. God is molding all of us right now all over the world. He's reminding everybody who we can trust and who we can depend on and find comfort. We cannot see our weakness until it is being revealed to us during tests. I know when I play basketball that I have a weak left hand when I do a layup. I know that I am weak in cross crossover dribble because there is somebody defending me. We cannot see our weaknesses until somebody is in front of us opposing us, test or challenging us. Impatience is revealed when something hinders our progress. And that's why test is necessary so that we can see our own weaknesses. As a father, as a mother, now is the time that we can spend time with our children. And we have to make good use of this time that God has given us. Pride is even revealed during tests when we are forced to do something that is not important. Stubbornness is revealed when we are forced to do something that we don't like. 
And it's so funny that people are saying, what are we going to eat if we're not going to work for a month? And somebody said in the Philippines that look at those people who are not working. We call them standbys. They have been standby for all their life and they're still alive until now. So don't tell me. And God is teaching us during this time that we need to save money. You mean to say you don't have savings? That you cannot survive without work for a month? And what if you work and if you have COVID-19? See, it reveals what you understand and what you don't understand. Good evening, my brothers and sisters. Welcome back to our midweek service. Sorry for that technical difficulty tonight. That's also a test. And uh, and I thank God for this learning, uh, uh, lesson learned for us. Um, this is uh, one of the challenges of online services is our connection. So continue. Test reveals a lot of things to us. And let's go to Matthew 12. 35 the Bible says a good man out of the good treasure of the heart bringeth forth good things and an evil man out of the treasure bringeth forth evil things there you go and this is also in relation to our words And he says here, that's why we have to be careful during our test what we are going to say, what we are going to post, what are we going to react to. Because it says here, but I say unto you that every idle word that men shall speak, they shall give account thereof in the day of judgment. All of us, everything that we have said, every idle word, for by their words they shall be justified and by the words thou shalt be condemned. Death and life is in the power of the tongue. And he that loveth thereof shall return. I thank God for that. That it reveals what's really inside of us when we are in a test. Or we are in a difficult situation. We have to understand whether we like it or not. Tests in life will happen. And tests will continue. And tests are necessary. And I believe tests are productive. And they're all crafted by God. But there's also a danger to a person or to all of us that is in a season of testing. Maybe some of us will be angry. Some of us will be fearful. Some of us will be bitter. These are the dangers of, or maybe we fail the tests. But tests develop character. That's why there's a big difference in the military. People who go through tests and severe special training, they are called special forces because they go through a different kind of test different test of will endurance mental toughness they go through a lot more compared to let's say an ordinary soldier because it is only through this tests and hardships where our characters are formed. If you look at 
King Saul and King Solomon. They never really had test in their kingship when they ruled. And King Saul was consumed of jealousy. He was so jealous of David. And King Solomon, he was consumed by his own passion. And if you don't understand what I mean, then I believe it's time to read our Bible. Testing is important. I believe also test is a gift, a necessary gift that all of us have to go through. It is how we respond to tests which is very important. There's a blessing in tests. We get to see the hand of God, the supernatural work of God. And we can see the care and the assurance of a loving father. And we receive assurance of the power of God and the faithfulness of God. Let's go to Romans 12, 2. The Bible says, Be not conformed, but by the renewing of your mind. Let's go there. I believe this is what God is asking from us tonight. 12.1, I beseech ye therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. I believe through tests, I believe that we will become more mature Christians. I believe that this test has created a hunger and thirst for fellowship and congregation. Right. Amen. I am excited when we get to go back that we can congregate and praise and worship Him. I believe that brothers and sisters who don't clap before who don't shout before, who just look at us as if we're crazy, probably you're missing it too. And the moment we come in and we have this hunger and thirst for fellowship of brothers and sisters, that I believe we will have the we will have a revival. Amen. That we could have not experienced if we don't have this isolation and quarantine and lockdown in the first place. Amen. I truly believe that these tests, this challenge we are facing is actually molding us to become a better worshiper. Become prayerful. It will develop us to have the ability to endure, to be patient, and to know what is really important. Our businesses can be stripped away. Our health can be stripped away. Our lives can be taken away. But what is important? Right now, praise God, I cannot believe in my hometown in Cebu. I've seen pictures in, in Carbon, in Colon Street, in Fuente Osmeña. It's like a ghost town. In even in Guam, in Tumon, I cannot imagine it a place where there's not a person walking. I believe Ross is also shut down. I don't know. And I believe it is teaching us also what is valuable and what is essential. Right now, during this lockdown, 
I believe everybody's not buying any unnecessary stuff. No, no one is buying a new phone. No buying his new car. I, I believe that. I don't know, unless you have tons and tons of money. But if you're like a normal person, I don't believe you're thinking about buying a new shoes. Right. How many shoes do you have? I hope you can eat them. How many t-shirts do we have? There are so many people who care so much that they don't have to wear their clothes twice. Wow, praise God. I never thought of that. There was a one complaint even. Pastor, you don't have any other polo shirt? Why? Because that's the only one we always see you with. Hallelujah. Now I started having people giving me, brothers and sisters giving me gifts of Polish shirts. Probably they want me to, I mean, wear different polos. But as long as you have something to wear, I believe it doesn't matter what the brand is. What is essential? I believe that is what's teaching us also. Let's go to our last verse. James 1, 2, James chapter 1, chapter 1, verse 2. Three and four and after this we'll have a prayer sister Dina will lead us in our closing prayer my brethren count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptations okay he's here now this is the reason why we're having trials and temptations and problems and storms and I hope we get to understand it so we can endure it. Knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience. But let patience have her perfect work, that you may be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. And you, if you go down, these are the essential things that we should be asking. And this is the essential things that we really need. It doesn't say here, a new house, a new car, new clothing. No, it does not say that. It says, if anyone lack wisdom, let him ask of God. And I truly believe this challenge that we are facing will come to pass. Amen. And I pray that this test that we are experiencing, all of us, I hope that it will be effective and successful because its effectiveness and its success of the test depends on how we respond to the trials and the best things that we are experiencing. Do we come out better or bitter? Do we come out more faithful or faithless? Do we come out committed or the same? It depends. The Lord is coming so soon. COVID-19 has come. And we are all prepared. And we have studied. We have read all the things about COVID-19. How to avoid it. How to prevent it. Now we have learned to wash our hands like a doctor. Praise God. 
We have learned to value personal hygiene. But what if, not what if, I'm telling you right now through the word of God that Jesus Christ is coming soon. What are you going to do about it? I hope and pray like we prepare, like we prepared for COVID-19. And that's my prayer tonight. And I want to mention, we will pray for our frontliners, especially doctors, nurses. I want to pray for, I want to mention family members. I want to mention uh, my my auntie, sister-in-law, Sister Irene, she's a nurse. And my brother, Kuya Ricky, he's also a frontliner. He's not allowed to have a day off. He's in communications. Uh, my cousin, uh, he's a nurse, Charles. Our sister, my auntie in Cagayan, and my cousin, uh, Auntie Jocelyn Porvera, and my cousin, Dr. TJ. Our sister in Australia, Sister Hannah, she's a nurse, and uh, we have a lot of Sister Janeline Takisang here in Palau, Auntie Emma, our auntie, Auntie Debbie, and my father even said, Frontliners also, the garbage collectors. Yes, we will pray for them. And I pray, you know, for all of us, that God will cover us with His most precious blood. And we're in this together. Yes. Just obey. Just obey. And I would like to call on Sister Dina and she will pray for us tonight as we end our midweek service and I'll ask her to sit down and pray for all of us and uh, Sister Dina please come. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Brothers and sisters let us all pray tonight. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Lord, we just praise you and we just thank you, God, for tonight, O Jesus. Allowing us, O God, to gather, O Lord, in your name, O Jesus, in the comforts of our homes, O God. In the comforts, O God, of our workplaces, O Jesus, wherever we are, O Jesus. We just praise you and we just thank you, God, for giving us this time, this privilege, O Lord, to hear from you, O Jesus. Lord, we praise you and we thank you for this test, O God. Hallelujah, Jesus, because we know, O Lord, that this is, O God, our wake-up call, O Lord Jesus, knowing, O Father God, hallelujah, Jesus, that you are in control, O Lord. Hallelujah, Jesus. You're trying, O Lord, to humble us, O God. You're teaching us, O Lord, to call upon your name, to trust upon you, O Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Lord, we pray, O God, tonight, O Jesus, O Lord, that indeed, O God, hallelujah, our faith, O Lord, will continue to grow, O Jesus. Even, O God, that we don't be able, O God, to congregate. We don't see Amen. brothers and sisters, O God. We don't get together, O Lord, to praise and worship you, O Jesus. But Father, in spite of that, O Lord, hallelujah, hallelujah, O Jesus. Lord, that you will continue, O God, hallelujah, to guide us, to lead us, O Jesus. Lord, we pray, O oh God, for our frontliners, O oh Lord, the doctors, O oh Jesus, hallelujah, the nurses, O oh God, all the volunteers, the policemen, the military, everyone, yes, O oh God, God who is out, O oh Lord, who is away from their families, O oh God, who sacrifice and risk their lives, O oh Jesus, O oh God, to be of service, O oh Lord, to those who are affected, O oh Jesus. Lord, we pray, O oh Father God, hallelujah, Jesus, O oh Lord, that you will take out the fear, O oh God, and increase our faith, O oh Jesus. Yes, Lord. And Lord, with all this fear, O oh Lord, there will be peace, O oh Jesus, O oh Lord. Hallelujah. Knowing, O oh God, that you are able, that you are able, that there is power in your name, O oh Jesus. 
Lord Father, we will continue, Lord, to pray, O oh God. Hallelujah, Jesus, Lord, for Gigi, O oh Father God, Lord, for Angelica, O oh Jesus, Gatus, O oh Lord, for May Paras, O oh Jesus, Lord, for all those, O oh God, who needs prayers, O oh Jesus, Lord, hallelujah, for all our spoken and unspoken prayer requests, O oh God, we lift them all up unto you, Lord, we surrender them all unto you, Jesus. Hallelujah, Father God. And Lord, we will continue to bind this yes, coronavirus God. in your name, oh in Jesus. The name of Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. It has no power, oh Lord, in the lives of your children, in the lives, oh God, of those, oh Lord, who believe and truly trust in you, Jesus. Father, thank you, Father God, and we will continue, Lord, hallelujah, Jesus, to be hungry and thirsty for you, oh God, for next Sunday, oh Lord, for this coming Sunday, to hear from you once more. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah, oh, Father God. Lord, we praise you and we thank you once again all for your greater glory. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. And praise amen. God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. And we pray also, God, for our parents, oh, Lord. All of our parents, oh, Father God, hearing this message, we pray for our parents, protect them and guide them. Our grandparents, oh, God. Yes. Lord. Our children, oh, Lord. Once again, we give you all the glory. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 God bless everybody.